Hi everyone, how are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry, I have to use a different narrator for now, because there was a slight problem and I'm still working on fixing it. I hope this doesn't distract you from enjoying this video. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past and more. I got this on various sources. Please check the description to know more. There are many interesting topics there, and not all of them can be covered here. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite have <laughs> the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel. The link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Ancient Conquerors of Heaven the story began in 1875, when in one of the ancient Indian temples was discovered a treatise called Vimanaka Shastra, written in the Brahmanical language, Sanskrit. It was not its age that made this document famous, but its content. For your information, it was written 2,400 years ago. The author of the manuscript, the scholar Bharadvaja Maharishi, described the types of flying machines and their construction and with the caveat that it was a compilation from older sources. At the end of the 19th century, this book was considered mythological because aviation was still in its infancy. But modern scientists, having studied Vimanaka Shastra, have unequivocally declared that this work has nothing to do with fairy tales, it is competently written technical work. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learn something. And don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch till the end to avoid misunderstanding. Archaeologists at an excavation site in Dunedin, New Zealand, discovered the fossilized remains of winged humans. Further digging by Dr. Meyer and his team yielded even more astonishing discoveries. After the 30-day excavation, over 250 winged creatures had been found. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, said Dr. Meyer. One after another, these fossils kept appearing out of the dirt. It led me to think that an entire civilization of winged humans once lived here. Dr. Meyer and his team ran tests on the fossilized remains, concluding that the winged humans were a nomadic people that roamed the earth in mass groupings or flocks. These winged humans were a civilized people, said Dr. Meyer. They used tools and built houses. They may have even developed their own language. Today there are over 5,000 known manuscripts of the New Testament, and none of them are the original author's originals. They are copies overflowing with errors and inaccuracies that distort the meaning and prevent proper understanding. Inattention, fatigue, poor lighting, illegible handwriting, marks in the margins were taken as part of the text, sometimes the text was read aloud and scribes wrote it down, remember, how many mistakes there were in the dictations. In 1707, a book was published by the scholar John Mill, who analyzed about a hundred Greek manuscripts of the New Testament and found more than 30,000 discrepancies. That's an average of 300 per manuscript, with only important distortions and outright errors taken into account. But yes, the text of scripture has come down to us from the depths of time. The question is, how much of it is left of the original?
a comparison of photographs of the Galleria Umberto in Naples. The past has been substituted quite recently. On the left, the year 890 above the arch in Roman letters. On the right, the M was added to the photo after the restoration, and the building has drastically changed the date to 1890. We already had records, books, and engravings with substituted chronology, but not many such evidences have survived. Still, photography is an extremely useful invention. Bottled water is the biggest skim of the century and it can also be dangerous to your health. Studies from Germany show that in addition to the well-known BPA, bottled water can contain over 20,000 other toxic chemicals. Among them is diethyl hexyl fumarate, DHF, a chemical that interferes with the work of the human hormonal system. 16 of the 18 samples were found to block androgen receptors in the body by an astounding 90%. We can safely say that not only bottled water, but also plastic as well is very harmful to our health, as it is very estrogenic, so no wonder some men are starting to feel like women these days. Best water to consume is spring water. If you can find one locally, the better. And make sure to use glass containers. Spring water equals energetically live water. The equipment used in this video is electrolyzer for testing water quality and impurities, which you can buy online. During the early 1940s in the time of the World War II, Germans developed a sonic weapon that could send vibrations to the target location 160 to 600 feet, or 50 to 200 meters, and cause the soldiers fatal vibrations. Further away, it caused vertigo and nausea, by vibrating the middle ear bones and shaking the cochlear fluid within the inner ear. On these images, we see interpretations from the Book of Joshua, where the Israelites, in 1273 BC, blew on trumpets to make the walls of Jericho to fall down. Did the God cause the wall to come tumbling down like a deck of cards? Or could these people have really developed some kind of advanced sonic weapon like the Germans did? Think about it. In the Israeli necropolis of Beth Sherim, during the clearing, found a huge rectangular slab 2 by 3.5 meters, 50 centimeters thick, about 9 tons in weight, and 1,600 years old. Laboratory tests revealed that the Beth Sherim slab was made of glass. This is an astounding discovery, because to make a slab of this size would require 11 tons of raw material, which would have to be heated to 1,100 degrees and kept at this temperature for 5 to 10 days. The fact that this would require 20 tons of firewood is not as impressive as evenly maintaining a high temperature under a huge amount of raw materials. It remains to be seen how this is possible. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.